Hi and welcome to Sergeant Dorsey Speaks. I'm a retired 20-year veteran sergeant of the Los Angeles Police Department. I spent my entire 20-year career working in patrol within all four bureaus of the City of Los Angeles, Central Bureau, West Bureau, Valley Bureau, and South Bureau. I was also assigned to the infamous gang detail Operations South Bureau Crash, CRASH being the acronym for Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums. Many of you who have been following me since day one know that I am not afraid or opposed to pulling the covers back, exposing that thin blue line, and speaking to you honestly and candidly about police culture, police training, and deciphering police code talk that companies speak that we hear from police chiefs when they have to try to explain away something that is really very difficult to justify. I'm also the author of an autobiography, Black and Blue, The Creation of a Social Advocate, which chronicles my career on the Los Angeles Police Department, as well as the advocacy work that I began to get involved in in 2014 after publishing my first book in 2013. You know what happened in 2014. There were a spate of deadly police encounters, starting with Eric Garner, Mike Brown here in Los Angeles, Ezel Ford, and then everything else that followed. Tamir Rice and Sandra Bland and Rayshard Brooks and George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and on and on and on. So I'll help you understand what it is that you can do to try to survive a police encounter. Holding court curbside will get you hurt. And I wanna give you the tools and show you the red flags where an officer may be about to get aggressive with you. The goal being at the end of that police encounter for everyone to go home safely and that's on both sides. Visit my website, CherylDorsey.com, that's C-H-E-R-Y-L-D-O-R-S-E-Y.com, and read the first chapter of my autobiography, Black and Blue, The Creation of a Social Advocate, as well as my next to be released book in the Black and Blue series, Black and Blue, The Creation of a Whistleblower. Also, those of you who've been following me for a while know I have a lot of isms. You know, your agreement is not required. And most recently, the one that was heard around the world, all skin folk ain't kin folk. I put those Cheryl Dorsey isms on t-shirts, crew neck shirts, and hoodies. Anyone interested in purchasing one of those items, you can do so at my website, CherylDorsey.com as well. Now, let's get to it. Over in Chicago, Mayor Lori Lightfoot recently uh, was in the news and she's taken a lot of heat because of a, uh, I believe it was a no-knock warrant, but a search warrant nonetheless that was served on the home of a black woman a couple of years ago. And we're just now beginning to get wind of it because this black woman, uh, Ann Jeanette Young, has been fighting feverishly with her attorney for the last two years to try to get access to the video that shows officers breaking into her home unannounced or announced either way it doesn't matter they were at the wrong address when they entered her home she was nude and they didn't even extend her the courtesy and the decency that i'm sure any one of those officers would have expected a male in the presence of their mom wife or sister they didn't extend that just human decency to Anjanette Young. And so she's been fighting for two years with her attorney through FOIA to get, get that information and she just got it. And it went public. And once the video went public, well, you know, now it's a problem. There was a national firestorm over this video. I happened to see Mayor Lori Lightfoot on uh, MSNBC with Joy Reid. And I had said this before I even saw her on TV because I know what I know. And I know that there is no way possible, and I said it before, that a mayor of a major city like Chicago <laughs> could have the kind of foolishness that was going on at Anjanette Young's home and she not know about it. That there would be a two year effort for Anjanette and her attorney to try to get this video through FOIA and the mayor not know about it. 
It's impossible for that to happen because I think I said this on last week's podcast, there are units of officers who do nothing but read the news and know what's going on so that they can give not only the police chief or the superintendent over there, David Brown, and that's a whole nother story, uh, give them information with regards to what's going on so that they're not blindsided by something that's happening. My point being, there's no way that this fight could have been occurring for two years and Mayor Lori Lightfoot not know it. And she didn't go on TV once and pretend that she had no idea. She went on TV at least twice that I saw where she was clutching her pearls and talking about I'm a woman and it could have happened to me and my wife. And that was just an abomination. And Joy tried to press her, but you know, she didn't have the the internal knowledge to know to ask the proper follow-up questions. I sure wish I could have been on that panel with Lori Lightfoot. But Joy asked her, you know, what about broad liability protection that uh, seems to uh, be afforded to the police? And and when Joy asked, you know, why is it that police have this broad liability protection? Lori's response was something like, "Um, no, they they don't. They don't have Um, broad liability protection. And then she said, and you know that, Joy. (laughs) She says, and you know that because the city of Chicago has paid out billions of dollars in civil settlements. And so that that it would explain, according to Lori Lightfoot, why police don't have broad liability protection. Well, let me tell you this. Whatever billions of dollars the city of Chicago paid out, it has absolutely nothing to do with any one of those police officers. And Joy even brought up you know, the Laquan McDonald situation and how so many of the officers involved in that, we know, lied and tried to hide information and tried to prevent folks from knowing what really happened with Jason Van Dyke. Now, Jason Van Dyke went to prison, but the other officers who lied about what happened in that fatal shooting of Laquan, they're still out there able to lie again if they want to. And so there is no liability um, on behalf of the officers Billions of dollars paid, that came out of city taxpayer coffers. Not one of those officers had to come out of their pocket, which is what should happen, which is why part of what you guys need to be working on in 2021 is getting rid of qualified immunity as well as trying to dismantle these unions' um, ability to have so much influence and sway over police departments. Because understand, police unions are nothing more than a lobbying arm of the police department, and they should not be able to involve and insert themselves in these matters to the extent that they do, all the while paying millions of dollars in campaign funds to certain officials who are running for re-election, like here in Los Angeles. Across California, our police unions paid over $3 million to Jackie Lacey. So you understand why Jackie Lacey didn't want to prosecute any police officers, didn't want to meet with the community to speak about it, hadn't seemingly seen a police shooting that she couldn't get excited about other than until two months before the election when she finally decided to file charges against an officer, I believe his name is Castillo, or no, Richard Castillo is the victim of a vicious beating by an uh, officer over in Hollenbeck Division. And so Lori Lightfoot, for the first time in her time as a DA, decided to press charges against this guy. Too little, too late, because she was uh, voted out and uh, was replaced by David Gascon, a former LAPD command staff officer who was vowing to hold officers accountable. And so our police union wasn't trying to hear that. They did not want and did not support the election of David Gascon. They wanted more of Jackie Lacey for that reason, because they spend millions of dollars on her campaign. And I'm sure this is not anything unique to LAPD and our prosecutor. So my point is, Mayor Lori Lightfoot is an elected official. Now, I don't know what kind of money might have gone into her election coffers, but maybe those of you who live in Chicago might want to put your head down and, and, and figure that out because she's being intellectually dishonest. Well, let's just call a thing a thing. She's lying. Lori Lightfoot is lying, and now she's had to admit. She told reporters on um, a few days ago that she had first learned about this raid on Anjanette Young's residents. She said she had first learned about it on Tuesday. That was about a week ago. She said she first learned about it on Tuesday morning after there was a CBS uh, video that aired. Well, now she's kind of clarifying her story. And now she says, well, after all, um, she's acknowledging and admitting that she did know 
that Anjanette Young had been handcuffed while naked during this mistaken police raid. And Lori Lightfoot has acknowledged and admitted that she knew that back in November when it happened. And so the double speak and code talk that she's trying to give now is that, well, yeah, I knew about it back then. I just hadn't seen the video until Tuesday. And so now she's saying she just saw the video. Again, I call bullshit. There's no way in hell she could have known about this, knew that a video existed because they were trying to prevent it from going public and not want to see it as a black woman who it could have happened to her or her wife as a mayor. Are you kidding me? Did David Brown know about this and he not tell you because if he did, how was he still the superintendent over there? Oh, I know. Does it have anything to do with the fact that David Brown is a black man? Skinful? You know who David Brown is, the same police chief over in Dallas that sent a robot strapped with a bomb on it to kill a young black man. Now, listen, Micah Johnson did some terrible things over there. Several officers lost their life because of it. But we've never seen in the history of ever a police chief send a bomb strapped to a robot in to blow up anybody ever. And it hasn't happened since. And so he went undercover and we didn't hear nothing from David Brown for a long, long time. And now all of a sudden he's reared his head and you know, he's over there with this black mayor making black folks in Chicago think somehow things are going to be better and different. Well, according to WTTW news, mayor Lori Lightfoot, like I said, has acknowledged now that, well, yeah, she did know about that November, 2019 situation and that, now Lori Lightfoot is pretending as if something um, different is going to be done. And Jeanette Young is a social worker. And it's reported that she was telling seven male white police officers over 43 times that they were in the wrong house. And she begged them to let her get dressed during this wrong house raid to no avail. Lightfoot said she had no specific recollection. So again, she's changing her story. She's not saying, no, I didn't know. She just says, I had no specific recollection. Cause you know, that's just, that's code speak. That's double talk. I didn't have any recollection. Doesn't mean I didn't know, but oh, she already said she didn't know. So anyway, she's being intellectually dishonest. She's lying. And so she can't be trusted as far as I'm concerned. Lori Lightfoot is showing us who she is. And the reason that she's now trying to rearrange her words and explain this away is because there are emails that were sent to her emails that she responded to the news has it. And so now there's evidence that in actuality, she knew about this botched raid. And if she didn't see the video, shame on her, you know, police officers get in trouble all the time for, you know, they would tell us if you didn't know, you should have known as the mayor, if she knew that this incident occurred, it was incumbent upon her to look at that video. And certainly she should have done something immediately when it happened. Lori Lightfoot also lied when she said that Anjanette Young hadn't filed a Freedom of Information Act request. That's what she said to the news, Lori Lightfoot. And now she's had to eat those words and acknowledge that, well, yeah, Anjanette had filed for a Freedom of Information Act requesting the footage of the raid and that the city sought to block her access to the video. Lori Lightfoot first denied that the city tried to block her access to the video, her being Anjanette. And now Lori Lightfoot admits, well, yeah, the city, yeah, they, they were blocking it. Chicago superintendent David Brown has also said that his department is conducting a review of all search warrants that were executed in 2020 to determine how many have been served incorrectly. And so the question that begs to be answered is why <laughs> now you want to conduct a, a, a review, David Brown. Is that because you want to try to figure out how to mislead the public better the next time somebody comes forward with some information that wasn't previously known because the city was blocking them from getting it. David Brown says that now um, officers will need to have a top department official sign off on any no knock warrants. And those warrants will only be approved in cases where there is an imminent risk 
to someone's health and safety. Again, cold talk. Sounds good, David Brown, but having a top official sign off on a no-knock warrant would not have prevented, and I'm sure there was a, a somebody signed off on the warrant that was shown to Anjanette eventually when they she realized that you're in the wrong damn address and I tried to tell you that. Somebody signed off on that, David Brown. So having a supervisor sign off on a no-knock warrant is not gonna prevent six or seven male white officers from barging into another black woman's home and not allowing her to cover herself and conceal herself if you find her in a compromised state of undress. And David Brown knows that and so he too is being disingenuous when he says, well, now we're gonna require that a top official sign off on any no-knock warrants as if that's gonna stop officers from misbehaving. How about having a top official when every one of these no-knock warrants is served? Wouldn't it have been nice if there was somebody, and I don't know, maybe there was a sergeant there when that warrant was served. But if you can't trust your sergeants, David Brown and Mary Lori Lightfoot, if you can't trust your sergeants, then maybe you ought to demand that a damn captain <laughs> goes out whenever there's a no-knock warrant. I mean, they make the good money, big pay. Why not have a captain go out and be present? I bet you officers won't be doing that foolishness if there's a captain of police right there when that woman was asking 46 times if she could please put on something to cover herself. Those officers would not have behaved that way. And so you know that Lori Lightfoot and David Brown are being disingenuous because Lori Lightfoot just said the other day that she's not um, suspending the practice of no-knock warrants, so she's good with them. They'll have a supervisor sign off, okay, big deal. But they're not gonna wholesale stop the service of a no-knock warrant, according to Mayor Lori Lightfoot. And Mayor Lori Lightfoot also said that she's not promising that um, she's gonna fire the officers who are responsible for this, what she calls a, quote, colossal mess. So she calls it a colossal mess. She said, that's a terrible thing. It could have happened to me or my wife and that shouldn't happen to any woman. And I'm a black woman. We know you're black because we see you. All skin folk and kin folk. But Lori Lightfoot has not said to her superintendent, David Brown, that you need to hold those officers, all six or seven of them responsible for that colossal mess. And so I would imagine and assume that those six or seven out there and they're waiting for all of you and me to move on to the next atrocity that occurs. Forget about this, because something else is coming, you do understand. And those officers will live to offend again. Lori Lightfoot is still circling the wagons. In addition to not stopping no-knock warrants, not being willing to fire the officers that were responsible for dehumanizing Anjanette Young. She's also declined to discuss whether or not the corporation counsel, and his name is Mark Flessner, whether or not he's gonna be dealt with. Now, Mark Flessner is the city's top lawyer. It's his department, his department, that asked the judge to block CBS 2 from even getting the video in the first place. And so you can't talk about transparency and building trust, Lori Lightfoot, David Brown, over there on your Chicago Police Department, when you don't even acknowledge and admit that your top mayor, Mark Fleshner, is complicit in all of this. It's a First Amendment right that news agencies have. Courts should not be able to prohibit them from getting information and publishing lawfully obtained newsworthy information like the one involving Anjanette Young. And so here we go. Like I said, Lori Lightfoot and her superintendent, David Brown, really don't seem to have an appetite to do anything other than give us lip service on this whole situation involving this woman, Anjanette Young. So now the city council's progressive caucus is what it's called the Progressive Caucus are going to hold hearings on this incident. And so for my Chicago family, when the city council's Progressive Caucus decides to hold a hearing on the Anjanette Young wrong house raid, 
you should be there and you should demand accountability from each and every officer who was there during that wrong house raid. So that's it, family. A lot going on. Nothing has changed. This is it for 2020. It's a wrap. Stick a fork in it and me. Whew. I'm done. Now I need you to do your part in 2021. Hold these elected officials accountable. I've given you some names to make note of and um, to be on the lookout for when an opportunity presents itself. Or shoot, don't even wait. Get an email address. Get a telephone number. Uh, find a Twitter account and reach out to these people and find out how and when they're going to hold these errant officers on these various police departments accountable. Closed mouth doesn't get fed, family. If we don't ask, if we don't demand, we can't get mad when this stuff continues to occur. Wishing everybody a safe and happy new year. And I will see you next year. Be good. Be safe. You have been listening to the Sergeant Dorsey Speaks podcast, produced by the Get Global Network. Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey is a television commentator, social justice advocate, and is also well known for her book, Black and Blue, Creation of a Social Advocate an autobiography of her 20-year career as a black woman on the Los Angeles Police Department. The book details what she learned as an LAPD insider. Sergeant Dorsey can be contacted through her website, CherylDorsey.com, or via any of her social media sites like YouTube and Facebook. Take the time to subscribe to her YouTube channel, and also subscribe to this podcast via major podcast networks like iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and many others. The podcast is also available on wireless speaker systems like Alexa and Sonos.